our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Like we always say, today is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice. And we shall be glad in it. Again, we welcome you to today's Bible study. We ask you to invite those that are still walking around. Tell them to pay attention right now. As we could delve into this exciting book, the book of Revelation. Where we get to understand the mysteries about how everything will end and what the future has in store for us. So as we open today's word, let's dedicate this session to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we bless your name, King of glory. Yes, Lord. There is no one like you. Yes, Lord. You are the most high God, mm. highly exalted above all things, King of glory. Yes, Lord. At the mention of your name, every knee bows yeah. and every tongue confesses and acknowledges yes, that you're the only Lord we have. Mm. We praise your name. Yes, Lord. We, re we receive your word yes, with meekness, with joy, yes, because life Peace and joy is found in you. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So we will be taking today's text from the book of Revelation chapter 19. And we will read the first five verses. And this is the account we have before us. John writes that after the things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. Because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication. And he has avenged on her on her the blood of his servants shed by her. And again they said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sat on the throne saying, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God. All you his servants. And those who fear him. Both great and small. This is our text for today. And we will pick it up from where we ended last week. Where we saw the voices that came through from the chapter 18. But these were mainly voices that were astonished at how what they thought was permanent was suddenly coming to ruin. When they saw the destruction of the harlot, such destruction that they could not even help, we saw the different classes of people all watching from a distance, all in dismay, because what was before them was the wrath of God. Now 
visited upon the great harlot and everything she represented and all the glory all the prosperity coming to nothing now the attention the bible says shifts john has another account to bring before us. He brings before us another shout. A thunderous shout from heaven. It is like a celebration before the throne of God. Like I've always told you, ever since we began this wonderful book of Revelation. We see John oscillating. In one event, the spirit takes him to heaven. And then he sees what is being going to be revealed in the last days. From a heavenly perspective. Then he's channeled back to earth. And then we have a peak of what is happening on this side, what will happen on this side of uh, the earth. And then we see him shuttled back to heaven. Now we see the, the picture shifting from the scene of the earth. Now the scene goes back to heaven. And this is where we are at this point. There is celebration before the throne of God. This is not the first time this is happening. We have encountered several scenarios within the book of Revelation where there is a breakout in song and celebration in heaven. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8. We began that journey where we saw the four creatures crying holy, holy, holy. Again we saw in Revelation chapter 4 verse 10 and 11. Here we see the 24 elders casting down their crowns before the throne and there we understood in heaven the grandeur of God the majesty and power is so grand that the elders cannot keep their crowns on. We see them take a casting down their crowns. Bowing down before the throne of God. Again in Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 to 10 we see, we see the same elders sing a new song. Revelation chapter 5 verse 11 and 12. We see the angels joined by the living creatures now joined by the elders declaring that the Lamb is worthy and every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth praising the one that is seated on the throne and the Lamb of God. We move to chapter 7. We see a vast multitude crying out saying salvation belongs to our God and unto the Lamb that we see in verse 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 7 we see again the angels and the elders joined by the four living creatures falling face down before the throne of God in worship. That is from verse 11 to verse 12. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. 
We again see loud voices in heaven responding to the seven trumpet with words of praise which is followed by thanksgiving by the 24 elders. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 to 12 another loud voice in heaven declares that salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah have now come after Satan is of thrown out. We see another voice of praise. Revelation chapter 15 verse 2 to verse 4 before the sea of the glassy sea we see another a song being sung. Two songs as a matter of fact. The song of Moses, which was sung at the crossing of the Red Sea. And then the song of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 16. The angel of the water shouts of God's righteousness. And at that point, the third bowl is poured out. Then we hear somebody from the altar declaring God's righteousness and his righteous judgment upon those that have rejected Christ. Heaven is a place of jubilation. Heaven is a place of celebration. Heaven is a place of revered worship. You see, some of us miss it when it comes to giving praise and honor and worship. To many people, worship praise is about us. Yet that should not be the case. The object of our worship has to be God Almighty. Has to be the Lord God exalted above us. Praise cannot be about our circumstances. Worship cannot be about us. Worship cannot be about other people. It cannot be about the situations that we are faced with. Worship is about God. And that's a challenge for many of us. Because that's where we often lose it. We get to a place where we think that God thrives on our praise and worship. No, he does not thrive. No, without our praise and worship, he will still be God. It is us who need him. So we need to praise him for who he is. We need to worship him for what he has done. The wonderful things he has done for us. Which brings me to our today's text. Where we see something coming through. And here we see in these six verses, four times it is pronounced the word hallelujah. Now I need to take us back <clears throat> to an event that happened. In the year 1742, here was a man in his middle ages, 56 to be precise, suffering from poor health, following a stroke that he had had. 
nga mazoku nga alwade vilwade vimule meza kubulidi his name was George Frederick Handel edinyaledi yaido George Frederick Handel he was in considerable financial stress nga I have what the touch na simbi and at a very low point of his musical career nga nemu kuyimba akasera kali muka zibu he wanted to do something different jaya gala kuyikola ye chenja ulo his career had gone to the height and had now come down nga vyo kuyimba ya iti his previous works had somehow disappeared from the scene one day reading from the book of Isaiah he was captivated by the scriptures so he set about writing music that matched the glory and the meaning of the biblical text Twenty-four days later, he finished composing what we call an oratorio. Now, an oratorio is a piece of music. It is usually quite lengthy, over an hour. But it is based on a biblical event. And it's performance is such that you only use voice and instruments and the story is told through music so you don't have costumes you don't have action you don't have any change of scenes it is music that does all that now this oratorio that he came up with he named it the Messiah because it told the story of Jesus Christ as the Messiah at the initial when this work came out its reception was moderate but its popularity has grown and it has become one of the best known and most frequently performed choral works in western music this work of music the Messiah is broken up in three parts part one deals with the prophecies of Isaiah and others so it moves from the annunciation to the shepherds and it is only the shepherd scene that is taken from the gospels now the second part is the part that concentrates on the passion and ends with the hallelujah chorus this to me is my favorite part. Especially the climax of the hallelujah. Chorus. Now the third part is the part that covers the resurrection of the dead and Christ's glorification in heaven. Put it all together. You have a story from the fall of man to the glorification of Christ in heaven. You have a story that traverses the book pages of the Bible. Now when you read, when you go through this music and for many people that listen to it, when it comes to the th Second part. Many think that because he, where he sings the hallelujah as the climax. To many people, what comes to mind is that this was influenced 
by the book of Psalms. Why? Because in the book of Psalms, 24 times we have the word hallelujah pronounced. Hallelujah. Just within Psalm 104 and Psalm 150, we have 22 times the word hallelujah. Yet, that's not where he drew this inspiration. The inspiration for hallelujah chorus, according to history, is drawn from the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Where we see four times in this one chapter the word hallelujah comes to the front. And today, we will look at the three times when hallelujah is pronounced in heaven. Now, many times we hear this word said, hallelujah. And we love to declare hallelujah. But what does hallelujah mean? It's one of the things that happened to us or happened to me when I came to the faith. There is so much that I encountered that I could not explain. So when I ask the brethren, what does it mean to say hallelujah? I was told, just say hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> And it puzzled me. I needed to understand it. Because hallelujah did not exist in English. So hallelujah is actually one of the words that have been passed on from Hebrew in, in the Greek, then it it is pronounced hallelujah. So but from the Hebrew, hallelujah combines two words. The first word is the word hallel. From which we get the Hebrew word for praise. Then the second part is the word ya. Now, Yah is the short for Yahweh. Now, putting Halel and Yah together, you then have Hallelujah. Which means praise the Lord. So now the next time you are saying hallelujah. And somebody is saying praise the Lord. You are actually saying the same thing. So so for many of us, when we say hallelujah, we want to say praise the Lord. What does not dawn on us is that we are actually saying the same thing. You say the same thing in Hebrew and you are now saying the same thing in English. Isn't that wonderful? Because you are praising God and praising God and praising God again. And what that is exactly what we see today in the text that we see. We see God's people praising Him. See, a lot of people have looked at the two parallels of the book of Psalms and the book of Revelation. And they have drawn some parallels here. Here they see Israel, God's people, praising him. And this is clearly pronounced towards the end of the Psalms. Like I told you, from Psalm 104 to Psalm 150, that is where you have the concentrations of the Messianic Psalms or the Psalms that sing Hallelujah.
kati ezabuli ezogera nyo ku Kristo zisanga munyo muzabuli chikumi munya paka mu chikumi mwatano and we understand that psalms are psalms are basically songs most of the psalms are songs praising god so the praises of god by Ata, god's people end with hallelujah kato kutendereza katonda okuveri abantu bekukomekereza nechi gambo hallelujah and so may i remind you that so too will it be to god's people kanku the church ne kanisa nayo chibenga bwechitu at the end of time kunkomerero ye bintu byonna Chapter 19 unveiled to us that we will once again sing hallelujah to and it is so wonderful so the first time the word hallelujah appears in the book of revelation is with respect to the final removal of the destructive church the one that propagates error in the midst of the truth and in the name of God tries to take people astray. So the praise that we see here is attributed to a number of things. The Bible tells us Bible that they are singing hallelujah and they are praising God for salvation, glory, honor, and power. Salvation Obulokozi glory echitiwa honor okusinza and power na amanyi four wonderful things ebigambo ebintu bine byewu that they are now praising god for katinga batende bibatendereza mukamba and they are saying something walwe bibogira wano they are pray these attributes they are saying belong to God. So salvation, glory, honor, and power belong to God. So salvation that we have, the glory of the church, the honor and the power that the church have is not based on their strength. They belong to God. So it is from God that we draw glory. It is from God that we obtain salvation. The honor and the power all come from God. It is amazing today that it is these four things that the world all over is craving and looking around trying to get. But at the end of time, we have this revelation that power does not belong to materialism. It does not belong to who is in authority at the moment. The Bible tells us it belongs to God. So they belong to God and come to ask God's people from God and God alone. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Because when you understand that, that the honor you're looking for cannot come from your works. It cannot come from your connection. The fullness of potential, which we call kabod or glory, does not come from anything around you. It doesn't come from what you have or what you don't have. It comes from God. The glory and power comes from God. And it is God alone. Now having understood that do you also see the flow 
Ulaba ni entambula yacho. Beginning with the principle of first mention. Glory doesn't come first. It begins with salvation. Why? Because man's greatest need is the need to be forgiven. Why? Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So your greatest need in life is the need to be forgiven. And that forgiveness only comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we look at the scripture, we then begin to see the flow from salvation. We then see the glory. We then see the honor. We then see the power. Look at that wonderful flow. All coming from God. The one who is no respecter of person. The one who says, humble yourself. And I will exhort you. The God. Katoni. who looks at every one of us uh, that comes to Jesus Christ, Abajeri, Yesu Christ. as his children. And you that has believed in Jesus Christ, irrespective of your estate in life right now, can be a beneficiary of his salvation, his glory, his power, and his honor. Rather be honored by God than be honored of men. Because men change their mind. But God he declares in Malachi that I am the Lord and I change not. Can we continue? The second reason for praising that comes from the multitude is because of his judgments which are described as both true and just. What message do we pick from there? The message that we pick from there is that Ultimately, God's judgment will come upon the unjust. Ultimately, all falsehood will be exposed. Ultimately, all sin will be judged. If it is not repented, irrespective of who you are in life. And in this respect, then in the context that we read, this judgment is being passed on to the propagator of all this falseness. In the end time. Here we see him having judged the great prostitute. Whom the, whom the Bible tells us that it is him that had corrupted the earth with her immorality. No and uh, God has now avenged the blood of his servants. So what message do we pick from here? That the mystery woman who is the city of Babylon who we have been looking at for the previous session the one who deceived nations into drinking the wine of high immorality 
according to chapter 17 has not only fallen because we saw him fall in chapter 18 but now in chapter 19 we see him judged because he has corrupted the earth and killed the sins so it does not end there sin may thrive for a moment it may look like it will not have any sad end but ultimately it will be judged and judged by God so the second shout of hallelujah is very similar to what we saw in verse 2 but now the, the, the description is more graphic. This Mr. Woman, the one who wrote on the beast, the one who held sway to all who held authority over all princes and kings of the earth is now destroyed by fire and the smoke of her destruction the Bible says rises forever and ever. Think about this. The Bible is saying the smoke arising from her destruction does not have an end. It just continues rising. In other words, her destruction is perpetual. It goes on and on and on. Look at God's judgment. This, when you mirror it, what happened to Sodom? It looks like God was very lenient to Sodom and Gomorrah. Because for her, it, the smoke rose and rose, but it did not go on perpetually. It does not, it reflects also what we see on the destruction of Edom according to Isaiah chapter 34. But now what we see is destruction on a very grand scale. When God pours out his judgment on all his enemies. And this reminds us of the end of all sin. You see, sin may promise all kinds of life. It may promise all kinds of pleasure and satisfaction. But according to the word of God, the end of sin is death. And all of those who give themselves to sin, the world and its ways will end in regret. Let's look at the third hallelujah. The third hallelujah that we have here happened between verse 4 and verse 5. Here the 24 elders, the four living creatures that we saw now join the great multitude and bring the hallelujah to the chorus of the redeemed. So and you see now all this arising in a crescendo of praise to God. And here, together with Alleluia, is added another word, Amen. An agreement. Amen. 
added to hallelujah. This makes an expression to God. Not only by agreeing with him in his judgment. But also praising him for his judgment. So here it is not just agreeing with God that you are just and true. But hallelujah and amen. Here it is praising him for what he has done. Which brings us to this wonderful question. Why does God bring this picture to us? Why does he bring us all these sins showing us what will happen in spite of the fact that it does not look like it right now. You see, through the book of Revelation, what we are seeing is the end. But things. things that are present with us right now. Things that right now appear so solid. Things that appear to be the envy of nations and peoples. Things that promise power. Things that promise salvation. Things that promise honor. Things that promise glory. But right here, what we see is that all those things, however grand, however beautiful, however magnificent, they have an end. We are shown this because if we see and know how things will end, then you have an opportunity to make an informed decision of whether you will end with them or you will make a detour in life and live perpetually. John puts it this way. He says, he who has the son has life. In other words, without the son, and the son is talking about Jesus Christ, you don't have life. Life is not in the abundance of things. Life is in having the one who has life. The one who is life. The one who gives life. Other than that, the rest will end up in this, it is temporary, it will end up in destruction. That cannot be your focus. Here we see the final praise in heaven going to God. Because whatever we are yearning for, they belong to God. And if we belong to God, then they belong to us as our present possession. So which one would it be for you? Would it be Christ? Would it be Christ? And God? Or will it be the temporal for you that is transient? So today, if you have listened to this message and would like to give your life to Jesus Christ, he has this promise. 
aine kisubizo cyo He says in John chapter 14 and verse 6 Agamba mu Yohana 10 na nyonyirirwa mukaga that I am the way the truth and the life Yenze kubo mazima nubulamu No one Teriyo comes to the father Asobola okujeri kitango except through me Okujja konga amaze kuyita munze He is the only way Ye kubo yokeliwo but he is not the broad way Nae sidye kubo lye gazi He is the narrow way Lye kube funda and there be few that find it Ate batono nya bali sanga because it's not the likely way Kubanga sidyo and sidyo subira okusisinkana The Bible says there is a way that seems right to every man Bible yegamba wali we kube lida bikange tufe eri buli muntu But the end of it is destruction Nenga likomekereza mukuzikirira So today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart why don't you surrender to jesus ask him to come into your life omusaba je mu bulamu bo save you akulokoli right now kakano where you are where you are will come into your life ajja mu bulamu by his spirit okuita moyo wo and wonderfully save you akulokoli we are all sinners Fenato alibono saved by grace. Echi sache cha tulokola. That grace. Echi se cho che chimu. Here right now. We chidi kati. Why don't you say this prayer? Rachi to damu bigambo bino. And invite Jesus in your life. Oyanirize Yesu mu bulamu bo. Say God in heaven. Katona ali muguru. I thank you. Kwebaza. Because you are wonderful. Kubango oli wa muwen. And your judgments. Ne misango jo. I write and true. Mitufa ate ja mazima and just. Ate bwengu ja bwengu. Lord of grace and Lord of mercy. Mukama wechitibwa no kusasira. In kusasi the matchless name of Jesus. Mulinye lita komeria Yesu. I thank you. Nkwebaza. Because you sent your son. Watumu mwanda wo. To die for our sins. Okutufidiro rebi bibia. For a sinner like me. Elia bono nyinga ze. So today. Dero I surrender my life. Bayo bulamu bwangu. I surrender everything to you. Bayo byonna joli. Come into my life. Jangu bulamu bwangu. The riches I have hunted for. Ebyo bugaga byembadde nonya. I've turned out to be a sorry god. Bikomekereza nga bisibitsi byebyo. But to the Lord I come before you. Nere mukama nze mbaso. I come to you once more. Zize joli na te. Lord mukama cleanse me. Ntukuza. Purify my heart. Nazo mutima gwange. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Zijuza no moyo mtuko. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Yerinyali aliwandike mu kitabo chobulamwe cho mwana gwendiga. That when I leave this side of life, tuenava mu nseno, I will be with you for all eternity. Ndiva nawe mirembe jonna. Thank you Lord for saving. Mukama nkwe bazuru okundokola. Amen. Amen. Now if you say this prayer, uma zokusabe sana. You've been wonderfully saved. Uma zokulokoka. By grace. Muchisa. There is that number on the screen. Wali we number wa ku screen. Please call. Jikube call. Somebody on the other side will pick it up. Wali wa gendo jikwata. And we give you the first instruction. Akuyabo kuwe bisokedwa ako. As you take those steps into salvation. Ngotali se kutwale ebitabi no mubuloko zi. Now for you who is born again. Kati gwe yalokoka. Wonderful saved by grace. Nge kisa che cha kulokoka. Cha kulokola. No matter what the circumstances of your life. Since This is the moment for us to join the chorus in heaven. Our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. And he says may your will be done. on earth as it is in heaven in heaven we have heard the chorus of hallelujah and amen it is the moment for us to join the heavenly chorus find the reason to say hallelujah find a reason to agree with him he is holy he is worthy worthy to be glorified worthy to be honored worthy to be lifted up worthy of all our worship let every moment of your life be a moment of giving him praise let every moment of your life be an hallelujah moment. And to that you add amen.
Amen. Amen. God rich bless you. So from Dominion Church. Dominion. Till we meet again next week. We say shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you.